So as we said, we would be interested to see what it means for a sequence to tend to some value or to converge to, to some limit, as we've seen uh, with the visualized sequence that it approaches to the value 1.0.6, and we would like to see what it means and how to rigorously define this. So let's let's see uh, a few examples. So for example, this sequence would tend to zero or converge to zero. And the reason for this, I mean, we can see uh, intuitively what happens. The bigger the value of n, the smaller one over n would be. And so we can make those uh, elements of the sequence to be as close to zero as we only please in terms of uh, value. So for example, if we take n to be 1000, then starting from n equals 1000 and on, the value of all the elements that are distance uh, between the elements of the sequence and zero will be less than 1000. And if we uh, take n to be uh, 1 million, then starting from 1 million and on, the, the distance of all the elements in the sequence from zero, from that point on, will be less than 1 millionth. And we can make it arbitrarily close if we, if we want the difference or the distance of the elements of the sequence from the limit to be less than one billionth. Then starting from one billion, in this case it's easy to see, uh, the different the distance between the elements of the sequence and zero will be less than one billionth. And we can do it for every uh, positive number that we pick uh, to be like the closeness threshold, right? So the really thing that we need to define here is what it means to be close and how do we measure the distance, right? And we see that if we take n big enough, the farther we go, the closer the elements of the sequence become to the limit, and then we would like to make this notion precise, okay? So, uh, right, so how do we measure distances? Well, on the real line, there is an actual way to measure distances, and uh, basically, uh, for two numbers x and y, we would like to say, okay, the distance between x and y is y minus x or x minus y, whichever is the positive one. If y is greater than x, x then the distance between y and x is y minus x, and if x is greater than y, then the distance is, uh, is x uh, minus y, and so for this we have the absolute value function. And the distance that we have defined intuitively is defined by this distance function. So we see, once again, uh, that we, we need this notion of distance. And here we have defined actually a function of two values, right? This function takes two uh, real numbers and returns a number, which is the distance of these two elements. And this is a very important concept in mathematics, uh, this distance function, which is called a metric. So let us talk a little bit more about this distance, because the notion of distance is the only thing that we really need to define the notion of closest, closeness and the notion of a limit. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about those distance functions, which are called metric and have crucial, very crucial importance in uh, mathematics and in, in topology. So what we have done here, we have defined a function that takes two real numbers, a pair of real numbers, and assigns a third real number to them, which is positive, and it's in fact the distance between x and y. Okay, so what are the key properties of this distance function? Well, property number one is that it's clearly non-negative, because, you know, it's the absolute value. And we expect that the distance between any two uh, entities between which the distance is defined would be a non-negative, and of course we want the distance to be zero unless uh, uh, only in the case where those two distant entities are the same. So, of course, uh, in case of points on the real line, we want the distance between them to be zero, if and only if it's the same point, right? So this property of the distant function, that any distance function is desired to have, is called positivity. Another property, it's just a property of the absolute value, that it turns out that this function is symmetric. And in our, at least intuitive understanding, it is natural to have uh, that the distance, at least uh, walking distance between uh, two points would be uh, symmetric, right? But uh, for example, it's not necessarily for driving distance when you have one-way streets, right? So if you go from point A to point B, you drive it on a car. If you have one-way streets, that it's not necessarily 
that you can travel the same road back or backwards uh, on the same road maybe you'll have to take a longer pass on your way on your way back right so it's not so obvious but here it's it's an obvious uh, property and this is something that we want um, every distance function to have and the third uh, property which you uh, yet need to prove is the mo the, the really non-trivial property is called the triangle inequality and some of you may be asking yourself where is the triangle here right and how is this related so uh, in fact this is the only non trivial property of the distance function but it's really desired and has crucial important consequences so let us talk a little bit about this uh, triangle inequality uh, in, in this context so uh, the triangle inequality is actually inequality from Euclidean geometry in the plane so suppose now that x y and z are not necessarily real numbers but just points in the plane right and uh, dx z is the distance between x and z and the y z is the distance between y and z and the uh, x y is the distance between those points x and y suppose that we have something some function that measures the distances so now in euclidean geometry the triangle inequality says that for every triangle the sum of any two sides is bigger than the other side and so if we translate this to uh, the distance function and we want this distance function to satisfy this intuitive property that or our intuition from Euclidean geometry then we need to demand for example for this distance that the length of this side in this triangle is the xy and so we would demand right the triangle inequality would, would apply that the distance between x and y is less than the distance from x to z and plus the distance from uh, z to y right this is the triangle inequality translated to the metric okay but here I have another theorem it's actually a property of the absolute value function and I say that it's called the triangle inequality or inequality for the absolute value function and so you would be right to ask again where is the absolute uh, where is the triangle here and we'll see the answer to this shortly uh, and we'll see how this inequality implies the triangle inequality for the distance functions we have defined but first let us prove this really important uh, inequality typically this part is is the famous one and this one is less famous but it's also very important and very convenient so we'll prove both sides okay so let us start with the proof okay so for any two real numbers uh, we have this right x is between the absolute value of x and the minus absolute value of x in fact x equals to one of the values if x is positive then x equals to the absolute value of x and if x is negative then x equals equals the minus absolute value of x so uh, but clearly this inequality holds for every x it is between the absolute value of x and minus absolute value of x and similarly for y now uh, let's add those inequalities so what do we get? What we get when, once we add those inequalities, we have that x plus y for every x and y has to be less than this and more than this. So by the definition of the absolute value, it means that the absolute value of x and y is no bigger than this. So we've proved the first part. Now let's prove the second part. Okay. So now we will use this nice trick uh, which will be uh, very convenient uh, in, in uh, other applications, so bear this in mind. So we'll write x as x plus y and minus y. So of course the absolute value of x equals to that, to, 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 to this. And now we use the first part of the triangle inequality. So we will say that this is no more than x plus y plus the absolute value of y. And now we can switch the absolute value of y to the other side and we have that the uh, x plus y absolute value is bigger than that but x and y are absolutely arbitrary numbers and there is absolute symmetry in the values of x and y so just interchanging their roles uh, by the same procedure we, we can conclude that uh, the absolute value of y minus x also has to be smaller than this and again this means by the definition of the absolute value it means that the absolute value of this expression whether it's x absolute value minus y or y uh, absolute value minus x it has to be no bigger than this so we have proved the second part now we have this important corollary that in fact if we look at this distance function that we have defined 
then it satisfies this triangle inequality. And now it's using this inequality, triangle inequality that I called, uh, that we've proved, that previously called the triangle inequality for the absolute value. Now using this uh, inequality that we've proved will be, it will be for this function a straightforward demonstration. So let's see how it's done. So we start for this function, distance function that we have defined, uh, uh, the distance between x and y is x minus y, and a very nice trick that is also often used and will be often used in this course, we just interject another value here, so we'll have x minus z and uh, plus z uh, minus y, so again we change nothing because this z cancels here. And now we use the triangle inequality that we've proved to separate the two and we say that the absolute value of this is no more than the absolute value of x minus z plus z minus y. And again, by definition, this is the distance between x and z, and this is the distance between z and y. And so we have shown that for this uh, distance function, we have defined that it satisfies the triangle inequality. So this is this is very, very important. And so any, any function, any uh, function that will satisfy those uh, three key properties will be called a metric. And so if we have an arbitrary set on which we have a way of measuring distances, and we measure the distance with this uh, some function that says the distance, but our demands from this function is that it would be non-negative, that this will be function will be symmetric, and that it will satisfy the triangle inequality, then all the intuition that we have for real numbers and maybe for the plane with the Euclidean geometry will transition uh, to this abstract set. And so there is a way to vastly generalize uh, intuitively and directly everything that we've done here to a uh, very abstract space. And it turns out to be very convenient and, and very useful approach in mathematics to take those key properties and uh, generalize them.